Dancing is all about feeling. Feeling your limbs move through space, the air brush past your face, feeling the energy flow through your body, the blood gush down your arteries. In order to move each limb seamlessly, the body receives important sensory feedback information from your muscles and nerves. This sensory feedback is called proprioception, and it's what allows you to put your cell phone to your ear without looking at your hand, or remove your hand from a hot fire. But imagine going through your day, through your life, without this feedback information from one of your limbs. That's what it's like for over six million amputees in India today. And despite the fact that we've had tremendous technological improvements in materials, computing, robotics, less than 10% of these people currently use a prosthetic device. Why? Even when given a limb, two-thirds of people don't use it after a couple of days. Beyond being uncomfortable and providing limited functionality, these devices simply aren't integrated with the human body, with the nervous system. They can't feel, feel when somebody touches your prosthetic hand. And feeling is fundamental to our existence. So after a couple of days of using a prosthetic limb that doesn't feel like a part of yourself, it's natural, understandable that you'd abandon it. So close your eyes for just a minute. Think about your right foot and point your toes all the way to the ceiling. And now tap the ground with those toes. Open your eyes. How is your body, your brain, able to know where your toes were in space without looking? How are you able to know when your toes hit the ground? When you move your joints, your body uses muscles linked in pairs called agonist-antagonist pairs. Say you're planting your foot. Your calf muscle contracts, and the muscle on the front of your leg stretches. Sensors in that stretching muscle signal to your brain where your foot is in space and how it's moving. But in the current amputation surgery today, these muscle pairs are severed, meaning that when one muscle contracts, the other doesn't stretch. So no signals are generated, and the brain has no idea where anything is in space, because there's been no effort to reconnect the network. How frustrating. So even when using one of the most advanced prosthetic devices today, patients have to constantly visually follow their limbs. At the MIT Biomechatronics Lab, we went back to the drawing board. How do we create a prosthetic device that can restore sensory feeling? When you look at the progression of prostheses, you see quite some advancement. We had just a mechanical wooden leg in the 1800s, and now we have robotics. We have carbon fiber legs, things that are optimized for walking and running. But all of these devices are fundamentally constrained by their interface with the human body. So we turn to the amputation surgery. What do we find in the 1800s? A surgeon would go in, make a circular cut at the site of amputation, and basically wrap all the muscles, the bone, the nerve, inside the skin, with no effort to reconnect any of the relationships. And what do we see in the current day? The exact same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, in nearly 200 years, the amputation surgery hasn't significantly changed. It's as if there was a monsoon in Mumbai, and, you know, some of the power lines, the electricity came down. And instead of reconnecting anything, the technician just goes in and buries the wires. That's the state of the amputation surgery. So we thought, why not re-engineer this surgery? In our novel neural interface, we go in and take a nerve that's normally transected during surgery and place it into a muscle graft. And after it grows back after a couple months, we connect these muscle grafts in agonist-antagonist pairs, just like the physiological system, such that when one contracts, the other stretches. We call this the agonist-antagonist myoneural interface, or the AMI. The AMI establishes a bi-directional communication system, delivering instructions to the prosthesis and carrying back sensory feedback information. In our initial testing, in both humans and animals, we're finding that the AMI enables natural signals both out and into the system. 
It allows one to modulate their gait, their balance, and the control of a prosthetic device with higher fidelity. Folks, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of seamlessly connecting the human with the machine. We can imagine an era in which we bypass all the input devices and recreate experience straight at the motherboard, the brain. An era in which we won't be seeing with our eyes, tasting with our mouths, feeling and touching with our limbs. Imagine if I could recreate the experience of Niagara Falls for you sitting here in Mumbai. Not just the sight, the misty droplets, the breeze, the smell, the entire experience. Just like Sanjaya saw the war at Kurukshetra during the Mahabharata. As we start playing with the fabric of our nervous systems, we open up infinite possibilities. Well, almost infinite. The limit might be the human creativity. We may be able to enable you to recreate and experience the music of Pandit Ravi Shankar's sitar. But can we ever enable technology to actually create that music? That's the philosophical question, the ultimate test. For now, we're empowering those with limb loss. We're providing them greater functionality. And we're returning the quintessential sense of feeling. Thank you.